These are not faceless threats. They do impact directly daily lives of citizens and individuals. My name is Stéphane Duguin. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the Cyber Peace Institute. So the Cyber Peace Institute was founded at the end of 2019. It's been founded thanks to the uh, initiative, the will and the strategy of uh, corporations and philanthropies. Uh, we wanted to have an entity, a standing capacity, in order to support vulnerable communities in cyberspace. We help the not-for-profit sector, the NGOs, the hospitals, the healthcare facilities. Those who have critical mission in ensuring that the care and support can be provided those in need. They are under-resourced and under-equipped to deal with the cyber threat they are often victims of. NGOs are a particularly attractive market to cyber criminals because they are the intermediary in providing and distributing millions of dollars every year around the world. So you have entities which are uh, very close to uh, humanitarian services. And because we're in pandemic and that crises are multiplying, then NGOs are under a lot of stress of delivering. They need to deliver to their beneficiaries. So the donation flow is, is quite strong. These organizations raise about $30 billion annually to raise this money. I'm not sure if you knew about these statistics, but definitely cyber criminals know. They know where the money is, and they do not hesitate to go after the money. There's nothing virtual about cyberspace. There's nothing virtual about the internet. Today, cyberspace, the internet, is about providing electricity, is about accessing food, is about accessing water, is about accessing education. In the midst of the pandemic, cyberspace, the internet, allowed us to continue working. Those who come after hospitals, schools, food supply chain, and other critical services should understand that they are not endangering technology. They are directly impacting and endangering human lives, people's mental health, access to critical services, access to food, access to education, individual human lives, that can be changed forever by one reckless act on the internet. There is various types of cyber criminals. We have organized criminal groups. We have criminal groups that are backed or helped by state actors. We have individuals. The key is to understand that the NGO sector is an easy target and every attacker is an opportunistic one. NGOs are severely impacted by cyber attacks in numerous ways. The first aspect is linked to their mission. NGOs are for the vast majority in close contact with a sensitive situations, sensitive data. Having NGOs without capabilities to maintain the services, to secure the anonymity of their beneficiaries, is, is a huge impact. Trust, for example, is key for NGOs to operate. They can lose access to their resources or the ability to operate and distribute. Some people rely completely, uh, for example, in Yemen on donations and, and food from the NGOs. NGOs can also lose uh, trust uh, of their donors and funders that they were not able to protect themselves from ransomware. Statistics demonstrate that one out of two NGOs today have been targeted by cyber attack and that uh, four NGOs out of five don't even have a cyber security plan in order you know, to, to cope with attacks. The risk on reputation, the risk on funds, the risk on their beneficiaries, also the difficult capacity for them to recover because it costs money to recover. I think the ultimate risk is that an NGO will have to close its doors because the ransomware they will have to pay will completely destroy their operation and they will run out of all the resources they have. There was a case in Finland of a horrible and impactful double extortion that impacted Vastamo, the largest network of mental care facilities in Finland. Untold number of information, private information about people's mental health issues, abuse, past traumas have been made public. These individuals were solicited for ransom or otherwise. This database is going to be released on the internet causing untold consequences to these individuals by this breach of privacy.
One of the key challenges with attacks on healthcare sectors has been that these gangs oftentimes operate with impunity from countries that shield them from persecution, that aid them oftentimes in operating, and that they provide safe havens to their operations. They lack the will to increase international collaboration, and the world leaders lack political will to hold the other leaders and other nation states accountable for these malicious actions. In May 2020, the Cyber Peace Institute uh, launched and published a call to governments. This call demanded that the governments around the world take immediate and decisive actions to ensure that attacks on healthcare facilities are stopped and that they all work together to provide necessary measures for this critical sector to be protected. We have a program, the Cyber Peace Builders, where we provide and facilitate support to NGOs using help, benefiting from help coming from the private sector. So you have cooperation, exercising corporate social responsibility. They really want to, uh, to, to make an impact in cyberspace. They want to make sure that what they do uh, can be useful for the one with the least capacity to protect themselves. And we uh, make sure that this uh, goodwill, uh, this coalition of the capable and the willing, finds uh, the right fit when it comes to NGOs in need, uh, sadly, sometime after being attacked, in order to recover. The word cyber peace means that our technology and the infrastructure on which it relies is safe, secure, stable, and we can trust it. It's a condition where we can benefit from ICTs, or information and communication technologies, and we are not endangered by the use, that our privacy, our lives, our physical, mental health, our human security, our money is not in danger by using technology. The message we can share with the ones responsible or linked to attacks in the cyberspace, never forget that the world is interconnected. No one is safe until everyone is, including the one attacking. Today, Cyber criminality, cyber attacks, cyber espionage is increasing at the speed of light. At minima, the responsibility of states is to make sure that the collective response is going at least at the speed of law, at least. And we are still far from there. And that would be a simple call. I find technology has a, has a huge, huge potential to shape our lives, to improve our condition, to eliminate inequality around the world. It's, it's really, really something that we can use to benefit our human condition. However, we can only unlock the potential of this wonderful technology we have if it's safe, secure and stable.